The latest round of Elon Musk's Twitter files were released yesterday and focus on the influence the FBI wielded to control and censor content on the social media platform. According to the release, throughout 2020, the FBI repeatedly met with Twitter's head of trust and safety, encouraging him to dismiss reports of Hunter Biden's laptop as Russian misinformation. Twitter employees devoted so much time to the FBI's demands that the Bureau eventually reimbursed the tech giant $3.4 million in taxpayer money. Well, this may sound sketchy. Were any of the FBI's actions illegal? And what should be done about it? Joining me to discuss it is Tom Fitton. He's the president of Judicial Watch. Tom, thanks good for morning. coming today. Well, good evening. Good to be with you. Thank you, Joseph. Good to have you. In your opinion, as you've monitored this story, what's the most significant part of the Twitter files as it relates to the FBI? Uh, the FBI was abusing its authority to target uh, and abuse the First Amendment rights of American citizens. It seems to me a uh, apparent violation of the law. You know, you have a right to free speech. Uh, it's a constitutional right. It's a God-given right. And uh, the FBI just can't go in and ask someone uh, to suppress it. And, and, you know, taking a step further, even initiate an investigation on you over your First Amendment protected speech on the internet. Uh, so uh, there are several levels of corruption here at the FBI. It seems to also involve the Department of Homeland Security and who knows what else um, in terms of other federal involvement. Yeah, I wanna talk about the layers of this because it certainly does look bad politically. Now we know that as a legal matter, at least we think we've generally operated under the, under the uh, a expectation, excuse me, that a private company is not required to communicate someone else's message. And this is the big discussion about whether Twitter is a public forum or whether they're a private company that can say whatever they want or not say whatever they want. Obviously, the government has gotten involved here. Um, is this something where this is um, just political or is there a reason to think that this is definitely illegal either by Twitter or by the FBI? Or maybe by both. Uh, so that's the concern here. When you have collusion to suppress the civil rights of U.S. citizens, uh, that you know that violates federal law. And uh, on top of that, you had uh, targeting of citizen speech based on their discussions related to election issues. So you had suppression of the Hunter laptop story. You had the FBI targeting U.S. citizens over their material that they were posting about election disputes. So on top of the suppression of civil rights, you had potential election interference. And, you know, for instance, Twitter had told the FEC that they weren't colluding with the, the political campaign of Joe Biden or anything like that. The documents suggest otherwise. Yeah, and one of the more interesting revelations, at least to me, is the revelation that the FBI paid Twitter $3.4 million essentially is reimbursement for employee time. So if the federal government is reimbursing Twitter for employee time, does that make them employees of the federal government? And therefore, is that just de facto evidence that we have federal agents controlling what information is communicated? Well, A, remember what Twitter was doing for the FBI. They were surveilling, sharing information about the typically constitutionally protected activities of, government, of, of U.S. citizens, and then censoring U.S. citizens at the behest of the FBI. And you get paid to do things like that. It sounds to me like you're operating, operating as an FBI informant or asset. And uh, you know, Musk has disclosed today uh, that uh, this operation obviously didn't just include Twitter, include Facebook and YouTube. You know, So however bad it looks as to what was going on at Twitter, you have to remember, compared to Facebook and YouTube, Twitter is small potatoes in terms of the number of users. Uh, so I have a feeling this scandal is going to blow up like a mushroom cloud uh, when we get the documents, and we will get the documents. Somehow the documents will come out either through FOIA or through congressional investigations as to what type of activity uh, was going on with Facebook and YouTube in terms of censoring and directing a speech be targeted uh, for censorship. 
Tom, we are beginning to see a defense of Twitter's and the FBI's behavior in this case. Here's what uh, left-wing News Nation host Dan Abrams had to say about the criticism of the FBI. Let's play clip three. Criticizing the FBI is different from suggesting they were politicized and rooting for one team. The FBI has never, ever had a director as a Democrat throughout history. They've all been Republicans. So this bizarre and, in my view, anti-law enforcement effort to undermine the FBI appears to be falling flat. So, Tom, what's your response to this idea that the FBI has always had Republican leadership, therefore it couldn't possibly be doing uh, what is being suggested here? Well, uh, he's, mis he's, he's, he's misleading uh, folks because he's pretending that Republican um, partisanship means that your ideology uh, would lead you to support conservative speech. And that's not always the case. I mean, you see this now with the fights on the Hill. You have some Republicans who don't like conservative approaches uh, to public policy issues. You have battles. We're going to have a primary battle. And as we had in 2016, we're going to have another one in 2020 between President Trump and other members of the Republican Party. Uh, so, you know, there are political interests here that go beyond party. There is this ideological hatred and animus uh, for President Trump. And they were worried in 2016, or they pretended in 2016, that Russian bots on the Internet had something to do with his victory. So no matter what happened on the Internet in 2020, they were going to stop it using the idea that the Russians might be behind it, whether or not that was true. And that's what they did with the Hunter Biden laptop. And they use that as an excuse, the idea that Russians are out there to censor and spy on Americans. Yeah, it's, and it was all based on the big lie and smear of Trump. And that's not about Republican versus Democrat. That's about they don't like Trumpism. They don't like his supporters. Uh, they don't like his outlook and his public policy positions. You know, and as you know, you know, on some issues, uh, the Republicans aren't comfortable on debates about LGBT rights. Uh, the transgender extremism that we're talking about, COVID, things like that. So uh, it's it's conservative versus the establishment. I think that's the way you got to think about it. Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch, thanks so much for your time. You're welcome, Jeff.